Before we start, please take into account that Arkenforge is a very robust piece of software. The way I use it is in no circumstances the only way to do it. It is far more flexible and allows various techniques to achieve the same goal. Also, in these short clips, I focus on the map-making part of Arkenforge, but it is far more advanced with its own soundscape and encyclopedia models, and many many more. I encourage you to experiment with the software yourself as much as you can. Hey, Timur Sol here. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've seen um, roughly basic stuff that you can do with different line placements, different assets, um, and uh, multi-selecting tokens, and so on and so on. What I wanted to show you now is uh, one of the uh, more interesting options uh, that uses some of the options that we've all, we, uh, we have already uh, we have already seen. Um, this is one of the maps that I made for my players, uh, one of the layers of hell. As you can see, there's a bridge, there's a lava flowing under war, uh, underneath, uh, fires burning, smoke uh, coming from different parts of the of the of the lava where it meets the stone, and so on. Now, most of these things are simply uh, animated smokes or stuff like that. These are uh, assets that you have also presumably in your Ark and Forge uh, essentials. Um, they are layered underneath the stones, so they look like the stones are uh, burning themselves. But you might be wondering how on earth did I make the lava flow like this? Uh, and this is actually thanks to one of the new features from Ark and Forge. Um, but additionally, it does use also uh, one of the techniques that I've talked about earlier on in one of the first videos. Now, most of the assets over here are locked, but so I can't click the lava over here. If I use my shift and drag select, you'll see that the floor, the background consists of three levels. It's lava tile one, lava tile two, and lava stones. I'm gonna pick the first one and move it to the right side gonna select second one move it over here and the third one is going over here now gonna select multiple of them you'll see that the lava stones so this one the one that actually moves is on the layer zero uh, layer one is lava tile two so it's above this one it's over here and it's above and lava tile one is even above this one um, each of those use the um, use the tiled noise uh, option which I showed you in one of the earlier videos uh, but what this has additionally is one of the animations that you have the effect that you have over here now um, since this is a tiled uh a tiled animation uh sorry a tiled asset you have the option enabled over here you can go into tile scroll and choose dial tile scroll on or off if i put it off you'll notice that it stops moving put it on again and it reverts to the basic um, basic settings of Arc and Forge. So I would need to go back to my tile X scroll and tile uh, Y scroll. And this is pretty obvious, I feel. If you make it go all the way here, it goes up. All the way here, it goes down. Uh, we're interested in probably something like 0.6 but we're not interested in it going left or right. So what we're going to do here is put a zero over here. This way we have lava flowing downwards only without movements to left or right side. Uh, and since it has these, uh, this interesting uh, noise on it, it also has spots where it looks like it's flowing more uh, more consistent and parts where it looks like it's not consistent at all. If I move it back on my assets over here, 
you'll see that it fits nicely and has a really nice effect of being underneath layer. Now this is a technique you can use also for, for example, frozen lakes or things like that. Um, a technique which I will probably use in the future exactly for that scenario, uh, just when my players end up in the frosty, frosty north. <laughs>